Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today we're going to take a look at a program that I haven't covered in the past. It's Photo Studio 8 by ACDC. I'm sure you can imagine that I get numerous requests from photographers asking me to cover different applications. One of those is Photo Studio 8. Today we're going to take a look at it. We're going to be taking a look at the Mac version. It's Photo Studio 8 is the Mac version. Uh, they also have a Photo Studio version for Windows computers. Actually, ACDC has a lot of different applications. In the description below this video I'll have a link to their website and you could check out what they have. They also have um, free trials for all the software so you could try it before you buy it. Now as far as Photo Studio is concerned I was actually pleasantly surprised. It's one of those uh, applications that doesn't get I guess all the press that some of the others do like Luminar or On1 but I found it to be actually pretty powerful and it has quite a few features as well. Now, I didn't try out the Windows version at all. I'm under the impression that the Windows version is slightly different in that it has actually more than the Mac version does. And it might be cosmetically a bit different. Someday I'll invest in a Windows computer. I actually don't own a Windows computer and I'll be able to check out some of these Windows applications and see how they compare to their Mac counterparts. Until then, all I could say is that you could download the free trial that they offer and see how it compares uh, to the Mac version. Now, um, as far as this Photo Studio 8, uh, when you first open it, you could import images from your um, memory card or your camera directly. You can see in the left hand corner there's a little import button. Also you could import images from Lightroom uh, through that import button. Or you could just navigate to where they are on your computer. I happen to have a folder on my desktop and I have just a couple images in it so we could test out the application. Now we're in what's called the manage view. Uh, over on the top right hand side you'll see there's three different views. Manage view, then one called view, and then one called develop. I should call, this is just called manage, not manage view. But in manage, uh, you could do star ratings, color labels, you could uh, reject and pick flag the images as well. You also could add keywords. You could also sort images into uh, categories, places, people. You could add new categories um, as well. Uh, so Pretty much the stuff you could do in the library module of Lightroom you could do here in this manage part of uh, Photo Studio. Now when you're in or if you have an image, let's say I want to work on this image, if I just double click on it I'll automatically enter the view mode. The view mode is basically you're getting a bigger view of the image and there's a tough couple different views. Right now I'm looking at the embedded preview. The embedded preview is just the JPEG that is embedded in the RAW file. If you want to see the interpreted or the, um, the, the decoded RAW, you've got to flip that switch. And you can see that it's a little more colorful, a little cooler looking, uh, maybe, than the embedded preview. So this is the RAW decode, it's called. You may want to do that because when you actually go to process the image, you're going to be processing the raw decoded version of the image, not the embedded preview version of the image. So we have this raw decode you could see here. From here too, at the lower right hand corner, you could give it a check mark that's like a pick flag or reject flag and so on as well. But, I mean, I know you're here to see how it actually processes the image. When you do that, you... Oops, I didn't want to do that. I, There we go. We want to go to the develop part of the application. So we'll click there and you can see it has a bunch of tools over here on the left hand side. They're divided up into four categories. One is called tune and this is where 
you know, most of your processing well done. Next to that is detail, that's sharpening and noise reduction. You could uh, tune the skin, chromatic aberration correction, and defringe the uh, image there. Geometry is lens distortion. You could rotate it, crop it, remove vignettes there. Next to that is repair. And this is um, this repair tool. You have a heal and clone tool. That's like the spot removal tool in Lightroom, although it looks works slightly differently, and I will cover that in this video. And we have red eye correction. Now, you're going to start with tune, and you're probably going to start right at the top. And right away, you'll see it's a bit different. And those of you that may have used Lightroom like several years ago, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, uh, this will look familiar to you because it doesn't have uh, highlights and shadows. It has highlight recovery and fill light. You'll notice these sliders are all the way to the left, so you can't go negative on them. Highlight recovery is as though you're raining in the highlights. So if I move this to the right, you'll see the highlights get darker. Fill light is as though you're opening up the shadows, and you can see that I open that up there. Now, a lot of people, including myself, on many images, particularly landscape images, we start out with, uh, let's say in Lightroom, we rain in the highlights and open up the shadows. And that's pretty much exactly what I did with those two sliders. Of course, above that's exposure. If you didn't nail exposure uh, when you took the image, you could adjust that there. So those work similarly to highlights and shadows. It's just they're one-way street. Uh, contrast, we could add some contrast to it. And most of these now will start to look familiar. We could add some clarity to the unit, we could maybe, or to the image, add a little dehaze. And um, above that, you know, we're working in color. If you wanted to convert it to black and white, you would just click right there, and we could be then working on a black and white image. But I like that. We're done with general. We'll go to white balance. I think the image is a little bit too cool, so I want to warm it up. I'll just move temperature a little bit to the right. That's all I'm going to do there. Next, we'll go to Light EQ. This is actually three different tools here. You have a basic tool, and this you have highlights and shadows and midtones, and these work as you would expect them to. If you move the uh, shadows to the right, you're opening up the shadows. To the left, you're knocking them down. And similarly with the um, midtones and highlights. Now, this is a, actually a very powerful tool. So if we go to uh, standard, let's say you just want to affect a specific part of the highlights or a specific part of the shadows. You could do that here with these sliders. Uh, for example, example, if I go here and start moving it up, you can see how it's opening up just the darkest areas of the image. And down here as well, if I'm opening up something more towards the midtones, and here, a little more towards the, the highlights maybe. And you can see how you could target specific parts. And if you want to make them darker, you do the bottom uh, sliders. So this is pretty cool, I thought. I thought this is a way you could kind of get a whites and blacks adjustment that you would do in Lightroom, and you could do that here. Next to that is Advanced. And here you have a couple sliders at the top. You can just move these if you'd like, or you could come down here and drag right on this kind of pseudo histogram at the bottom and get your adjustments that way um, with that. This one, um, I didn't... I didn't find it quite as um, satisfying to use uh, compared to the standard. I just thought the standard was just a bit more powerful. Um, so I, I kind of liked using that. But teach his own. So that's why it's nice to have these um, variety of tools because what may work for me may not work for you. So that is light EQ. I found that to be pretty cool. Uh, color EQ, this is your standard standard HSL. That's hue, saturation, and luminance. They don't call it luminance, though. They call it brightness. It also has contrast, so you could adjust the contrast to individual colors in the image here. I don't think I need to do anything here. That's high quality. You go, go to standard, and you can see that you have uh, just saturation, brightness, and hue with standard, whereas high quality adds that contrast in there as well. 
that's the color EQ. Uh, we have a color wheel. Um, the color wheel can only be used when color EQ is in high quality mode. So you have to go up to here, put this in high quality mode, do your adjustments there, and then you see you get a color wheel. That's a pretty standard color wheel, um, probably a little closer to the way Capture One utilizes color wheels as opposed to Lightroom um, there. But again, I don't think I need to do much with the color on this image here. You have tone wheels as well. This is kind of split toning, but it includes the mid-tones mid as well. Um, tone curves. So we have an actual tone curve here. So if you want, you know, if you're kind of old school like me and you want to use a tone curve and add contrast or something, you could do that with the tone curve. Uh, soft focus effects. So it has all these kind of now kind of creative artistic effects uh, as well cross-processing, give it a cross-process look. Um, for those of, that, of you that aren't familiar, cross-processing is when you're shooting film typically and you would, let's say, shoot color negative film, but you would use color positive film. That would be slide film chemicals to process the film or vice versa. And you could get these weird kind of color effects with it. It has LUTs, so if you're into LUTs, uh, you could utilize them there. Here is conventional split toning where you have just uh, highlights and shadows where you're going to affect the, uh, the tint or tone of those. Uh, Post-crop vignette, so you know, kind of a typical vignette. And output color space, uh, when you output it, do you want to use sRGB, Adobe RGB? If you have a Mac, display P3, color match RGB, pro photo RGB, and so on. Uh, then I mentioned that we have some more tools up here. We have the detail slider. This is for sharpening. So what you would do is you click on a part of the image like right here and you'd get it in this little preview window and you could sharpen it. You could remove noise. There's no noise in this image. I think it was shot at ISO 64. Um, skin tune. Uh, obviously there's not a person here. Chromatic aberration. I don't think there's any in this image. And deep fringe. That would be related. Geometry. Uh, lens distortion, they just have a single slider, so you could uh, uh, correct pink cushing and barrel distortion uh, with that slider. Uh, rotate, perspective, crop, vignette, so all those are included as well. And I mentioned in repair, I'm going to talk about how what I'm going to call the spot removal tool has heal and clone mode works. Um, first of all, the size of your brush, they call it a nib is adjusted here and you can see right in the middle of the screen it's showing it how big it is and feathering you can make it more feathered or less feathered now you just let's say you want to heal something there's no this you'd use heal i guess if you had um like sensor spots on the image or dust on your lens i don't see any on this image but let's just say that i wanted to remove this little bit of cloud over here you don't just start painting on it what you need to do is right click on an area you want to copy or use as reference for the part you want replaced so i would go let's say right here and i'll just right click then i'll come over here and i'll click there and then it takes that and moves it over there and you can see how that works and you could also paint as well you don't have to just click you could just you know do brush strokes uh, with that so that you know you know is pretty effective i don't need it on this image so i'll undo that by hitting command z on my computer a couple times and you also had red eye correction so um you know even me talking and not really paying attention to what i was doing over here um i was able to you know, process the image okay. Uh, of course, it's not something I'm proud of, but I think you could see that there's a lot of tools here and they're very powerful and you'll be able to um, effectively process a RAW file or a JPEG or anything for that matter. Now, what do you want me to see uh, or what, what do you want to see going forward uh, as far as videos concerning ACDC and um, Photo Studio. Do you want me to go into more depth? Do you want me to do a different application? Let me know in the comments below. Um, I'll be happy to try to do it. We got a new year and new things to do. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>